to upgrade um, the, so there are grade levels for safety hazard of, of gas leaks, grades one, two, and three. And one is, you know, there's gas leaking inside a closed building. That, that's like, you know, imminent danger of explosion. Um, two is a little bit, you know, less dangerous. And three is the least. And um, this bill would um, elevate any tree, any um, gas leak that impacts trees that has, you know, within a, a certain median sphere from a grade three to a grade two. Um, it's got right now um, uh, 56 co-sponsors in a house. Our uh, our representative, Lindsay Sutton, is a co-sponsor. Maybe Dome over in Amherst co-sponsored it. So, um, you know, I don't, and this bill addresses the issue of natural gas and its oversight on many levels, including reform of the Department of Public Utilities. But um, it's, it's an interesting um, approach to take, which is a legislative one. Uh, we also talked about, um, you know, strengthening Mass General Law 87, which hasn't been strengthened in, you know, over 100 years. <laughs> Literally over 100 years. Um, and um, and the, the group, the general consensus of the group was to stay focused on natural gas as an immediate hazard to trees um, and not kind of globalize it to issues around climate change. And um, I understood that tack. I have a slightly different perspective, so I'm going to meet talk, um, face to face with some people because I, I happen to think that you know climate change is impacting the health of our our canopies of trees you know with um infestation new, new pest infestations extreme drought so i think all of these things are related and natural gas is one part of it but the opportunity to educate the public more broadly about um, how climate change is affecting our urban forests and beyond i think is compelling so that did you supply us once with a map that the mm -hmm. gas company has that shows in Northampton the gas leaks? Yes, and then, we did. And then I thought that they expressed to you and you thought it was true that they were going to, going to much more aggressively yeah. take care of the leaks. And they did a, a, a take care of a lot of the leaks. They did. You know why? Because Northampton was local. <laughs> That's exactly why, because we made a big fuss. So um, how about now? Um, you know what you can do? Um, if they update those the gas leaks, it's it's public information, and there's an organization called Heat M A, so it's spelled H E E T M A, and they post on their website updated uh, gas leaks information on a map every year. So we could go there and see um, where it stands now. I know that I have smelled gas outside my house for the entire time I've lived there, mm -hmm. um, coming right up from the sewage system. And, uh, you know, they came and they their sniffer didn't get detect anything. And I've had numerous outside people go when they've come to visit me. Do you know, I can smell gas outside your house. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Is it locked as one of the gas leaks? It's sites? not, it's not. So, you know, I, it, I, I, I don't think the job is done. Even even in our little town, not to mention the eleven thousand reported leaks around the state every year. That's that's yeah. So, um, are there specific um, signs that symptoms that trees have exposed to gas as opposed to just other sort of general disease signs? You know, um, sudden branch dieback is probably the most common one. But then what happens in later stage is. The anaerobic um, environment from gas asphyxiation um, promotes a fungal growth. And so you can see also fungal growth sometimes on the base of a tree that is a sign. I remember I was doing a tour with Jay, and um, we looked at the base of a tree and said, oh, that's classic, classic natural gas. Mushrooms? Like, yeah, yeah, like, like racket woods? fungi kind of thing. Yeah. Oh. Certain kinds. Yes, yeah, probably certain kinds. kinds. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that um, the grass dies. Sometimes. Our street has died. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, yeah, usually it's not just the tree. You know, you'll get shrubs, you'll get other plant growth because it's all about asphyxiation. The reason I ask is because maybe uh, action could be to specifically look for those particular signs yeah. and then check 
those spots and see if there's gas leaks yeah. there. Right. By that time, though, is it, if it's that got that much fungus, you're gone. It's, you know? it's yeah, it's probably the, yeah. The only time I've I don't know about you, Rich, but the only time I've in, like interacted with it is we'll try we've tried to plant a tree in the same place. like exactly. it dies all of a sudden we plant another one yeah. it dies and that's and, um, yeah exactly and that's, you're like well you test the soil everything and you're like oh that's got to be so I'd like to talk to this guy about oh, the um, the sensitivity of their testing equipment because remember, Rich, it's my my uh, a rental property on Elm Street, and I had the same experience where I had a beautiful, healthy tree that I planted that suddenly had died back one year, and then another, another set of uh, branches died back the next, and then my neighbor's tree had some die back, and then another tree on my property, some die back, and I had, it was around the same time we had a conversation with Columbia Gas, and then someone come out and tested me, so it, it, it wasn't anything. And I, I just find it hard to believe. I mean, it, it could be correlation and not causation, but um, I'm wondering what the sensitivity of their equipment is. So this guy would know, because he is, you know, just one of the most experienced in the industry. So I think it'd be exciting to, at the very least, he loves educating the public. Mm -hmm. And um, him coming and educating us, and possibly doing like a, a, a tour around the valley to other, you know, the Amherst Tree Commission, with something happened in Greenfield, Franklin, Franklin. Where's he based the building? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm the eastern part of the state, but yeah. I don't know. Everyone, everyone doing anything, <laughs> it seemed like it is 100 miles away from it. But anyway, it was, it was a great start, and I will be following up, and I'll keep you guys abreast. <clears throat> I so all this to say that I don't know if I'm going to pursue the tack of reaching out at this stage to other tree commissions to get them to sign on to a letter. Um, it's it, it's it appears to be more delicate than that, and I want to be politically savvy. So, all right, I went on a little bit longer than I should have. Sorry about that. Um, tree warden report. Uh, just a couple of things. I just want. Uh, just uh, one thing I want to mention is the our Tree City USA uh, application. I'm, I'm almost done with it, but I just wanted to share a couple of fun facts with you. So this past year, we spent uh, about eighty-six thousand six hundred forty dollars for tree planting and initial care, uh, tree maintenance, which is, includes pruning, insect and disease damage, disease management, fertilization. We spent one hundred eighteen thousand two dollars. Tree removals, which includes cost of equipment, supplies, and labor, we spent one hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. One hundred eighty-six thousand uh, dollars. Management, which includes uh, public education, professional training, membership, salary, street and park tree inventory, is one hundred and one thousand. Um, and uh, we actually spent this year our volunteer time calculated was worth sixty three thousand seven hundred and twenty four dollars and eighty nine cents. Wow, that's great. So a total community forestry expenditures, roughly, um, is five hundred and fifty seven thousand one hundred thirty one dollars and eighty nine cents, which is a per capita of nineteen dollars and twenty one cents. Wow. Which is up from last year. Mm. Last year we were 18 and change. So, uh, had we done more removals, uh, there's more removals to do, but had we done more, we probably would have been a little higher but because of uh, constraints with the crew and the changing of the divisions around. It's, you know, we never really do as much as we want to do. Can you get that first number for um, planting? Yeah, so uh, tree planting and initial care was 86,000. And this, and this includes staff time. That includes the purchase of all the trees, labor for right. labor and equipment for planting, planting materials, okay. stakes, wrapping, watering, okay. mulching. Okay. And then the hundred and one, what was that again? That's management, so that includes wow. public education, professional training, membership, salaries, okay. street and park tree inventory. That also includes uh, um, any kind of uh, outside work that was done. For example, CL Frank treated all the. Um, Treated all of our most of our American elms. That's mm -hmm. you know six thousand dollar yeah. bill. Yeah. And then they they prune the henshaw elm for us. So that, you know so we are you know I kind of put everything together in a pot and then I have to divide it up. I can't dividing up the right. employees' time can be a little difficult because of the fact that um, they were this past year they still worked for the streets department mm -hmm. and so there were other mm -hmm. you know a certain percentage of their time was doing plowing and other things. So this coming year. 
we'll have a, definitely a better handle on the amount of actual hours and be able to dial it in even closer. But we, we just keep going uh, upward and onward, which is good. But I thought I'd just share that with you. I haven't submitted it yet. I'm still working on a couple things. And I'm also going to try to uh, go for our third year in a row growth award. Because mm -hmm. uh, we actually planted uh, you know, 240 to 294 trees. And we pruned, including the young tree trains, my, based upon what I had, about 250 trees. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that might actually be a little on the low side. Um, but, yeah. Um, do you know where the meeting is this year, Rich? No, I do not. There, there hasn't. Uh, it's probably going to be in the middle of the state somewhere. Plus, I think that Molly, I kind of asked Molly for a sure she wasn't exactly sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the date yet either. <clears throat> yeah, so it's kind of fun, fun filled facts. Um, and that's really about it. A couple, couple of things about the, uh, the uh, planting, the spring planting, but that could come on another. That's it. Really? That's it for the report. Okay. Um, I can talk more. I we were not able to get together, Molly. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't on um, email. I didn't have any yeah, yeah. to. Yeah. It's all right. It's okay. okay. We we got plenty of time. Um, it's still winter. So we'll just make sure that at the end of this meeting, we'll get to there as a subcommittee and send it in. Okay, so we have nothing to report in that department. So we might get up even earlier than usual tonight, folks. I already have a set to, to end at 6, and who knows? We could end earlier. I, I had to fix that a little bit. Just I had to add a little time to it because the, the time on the top of the meeting uh -huh. didn't match with the time you wanted to leave. Oh, I see that. So I just. All right. Well, I gave us an extension, but you can we can leave. Yeah, we can leave this early. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just one question. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the outreach? Definitely. Yeah, that's the next subject. Do you, oh, do you mean uh, um, for, oh regarding award six? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. And under that, I just wanted to touch base. So I uh, was able to contact Councilor Labarge mm -hmm. about the priority plan for award six, and she's all for it oh, uh, awesome. to the point where she actually wants to go out and do the site business with us. So that Great. kind of interesting. Good. Um, well. Um, Great. well, actually, that would be really good because it would be good to have her Great. there in uh, case yeah. folks are questioning, right. you know, supporting, right. so on and so forth. I just had an inspiration. Yes. Um, Peter Kokot and, and the former Peter Kokot and, and Shani live in Ward 6. In fact, they live across the street from friends of mine. And with his passing and with him being a longstanding member of our community, um, a leader in our community, maybe we could. Um, tie into some kind of commemorative tree, tree planting for him. Mm -hmm. yep. It's for people from 55 and up um, until we designate certain programming that's from 55 to 59. Basically, everything is open to anyone over 55 um, because we haven't designated specific things. But you're allowed, to, people can come in the building and I mean, and sit on a couch, right? If they aren't 55? If they aren't 55, no. No. Um, so if somebody brings a caregiver and they're under 55, that's fine. If somebody brings, say, um, someone comes and they, they um, are coming in briefly and they have someone who's under 55 with them and it's they're just visiting to come in to pick something up or something, that's fine. But um otherwise we would have our lobby full of no, people all day long that's yeah. a, i meant i meant as, as yes as, so you can be guests today, basically um, well so i that's, mean not to get not to get services but you can come in the building if you're accompanied by a person who is a member um, for you know the, a reason of like either assisting them or accompanying them. Yeah, we, we definitely caregivers are more than welcome to come with the person that they're caregiving for. And then um, it, people who are just stopping by to say, like we've had people who bring in, come with their mother to help mm -hmm. her, their mother s mm -hmm. sign up and learn about what we offer here. And, um, we are. You know, we want to engage caregivers and family members in helping people to access services here, but we can't have, 
and we do often have people coming in and thinking that this is a public building that they can just hang out in. Right. And so that's the differentiation we're making. We do have some programs that are for people who are low income, and so those people, I think there's confusion sometimes because there are people who are getting services here for brown bag or for interfaith or things like that where those aren't just for seniors. <clears throat> and so, you know, we are looking at how do, how do we make sure that people know where to go and are in the right place because we don't want someone who's here to, to sign up for interfaith, help with interfaith, um, hanging out in the pool room or going to hang out in the computer room and use the computers and things like that because because then all those rules about that this is a senior center and our programs are for seniors then kind of go out the window. It's, um, we can't, you know, we're a senior center, we don't want to have, um, unless people know they're going into an intergenerational activity or uh, um, they shouldn't go into an activity and find that there are people in there that aren't seniors. Like that is a senior center, this is programming for seniors, um, and our funding is to provide programming and services for seniors. Our Kathy was next, I'm yeah. sorry, Michael. I, I just have a know. question, just it's more pragmatic, that um, because I've, obviously everybody knows I work a lot at the coffee shop. Do I have to card people then to make sure they're over 55? I'm, I'm serious, because I, I, I can't tell all the people. Are. If you, if you, don't recognize them as someone who comes here and you and you think they might not be a senior, you can ask them if they're a senior. So our um, mm -hmm. volunteer who works in Major D stand for lunches, um, there are some city employees that come in mm -hmm. to buy lunch and take it to go. There are people yeah. who buy their lunch. Um, and so she, she needs to ask people if they're mm -hmm. a senior because we are giving seniors a discount. Right. We right. don't. And, you know, so it is something that we need to be comfortable doing. And, um, and then if they, if they they say they're not, we just ask them to leave? That's what the, the, the policy is? Um, I think that if you want some talking points, then we can talk yeah, about that. Pardon? Because we don't have to be rude. No. I think oh, I know that. We need to explain mm -hmm. that there are reasons why mm -hmm. we we are our funding is mm -hmm. to serve people over 60 mm -hmm. um, we're not supposed to use our mm -hmm. funding that's for people over 60 for people who are 56 mm -hmm. for instance mm -hmm. so we and we need to um, just explain that mm -hmm. and say that you know it's one of the only places where things are identified as for the senior population and that is a good thing I do know that. I just and when people added. become a senior they will be welcome yeah. to mm -hmm. access those resources I, I know that Michael and a few other people in time but I just wanted to add you know should there be an article in the Chronicle or maybe in the newspaper about this because I think people are in mis misunderstanding so they just don't know so people don't know <clears throat> well, because in the past, it's not always been um, something that I think has people have been able to pay attention to or to enforce. Uh, there was when before I came on, there were a lot of rentals going on during the day, and so there were people in the building for all kinds of reasons. Um, we are not renting during the day anymore. We are preserving our space for programming for seniors and. We've added a lot of programming, um, and people are happy about that. So we are actually putting our energy and our capacity into doing what we are meant to be doing. And we're using the space for what it's meant to be used for, and then we are opening up the space to be used by other groups when we're closed. And we are still allowing a community to be served by this building, but we have to keep it to a certain percentage. Uh, because of our community block grant funding. Right, right. Michael? Before some of the members came to mention briefly a bit of a blow up that happened today, led me to essentially, I guess, a similar concern that Kathy mentioned, which is to say I'm not sure how well informed lots of folks are. On the one hand, one attitude might be, well, we have to tell them the obvious. 
I think we do. Uh, I think part of being clear about our mission is making it clear. I wonder if a solid, helpful article in a chronicle that makes things clear wouldn't be a benefit. Sounds to me like if this guy goes to the Gazette, there's more crap that will come out and you know, we'll go back for you. And one way to deal with it in advance, I suspect, is to be as clear as we can be, um, as public as we can be. And I don't think that would cause resentment. I think, you know, those people who might know, I wish I could know, but they'll know now why um, our policy is what it is, and you maybe won't be faced with the kind of stuff that you were earlier today. Michael, that's one of the reasons why we have the code of conduct and we ask people to sign it, like that everybody reads it and signs it because the first line of it talks about the program. And there was a, a small death who about, because it was the young at heart chorus, everybody wants to see the young at heart chorus. So I, I know that that makes people make a mistake that way, but it does say very clearly on our code of conduct that most seniors should be signing, you know, we're asking people to do that when they come in. Well, it's not really addressing so, that point. My point yeah. is what Kathy was suggesting. Would it make sense to have a solid article in the Chronicle? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, not, negating that. I'm not negating that. I'm just okay. saying that no, we're saying asking that. the seniors to That I know, because we talked about it, and I really right. understand. Like, but My I'm point was the simple point. And I think more than just the Chronicle, it should be the news that because well, the Chronicle reaches older people, and that's who we want to come here. But however, you know, some of the other people may not read the Chronicle. They're younger, they're not the people, so how would they get notice of this? Go, Deborah, did, you had a question after Michael, did you? I'm sorry, I can, actually, I, I don't remember right now okay. the exact word, so I'll go after you. Yeah. I, know. I just want to second that third, and I agree, and I think, Marie, you hit on it. Um, this building is used for a lot of other things. So there's a huge perception that it is more of a community center. And you know, we all know that programming during the day is not you know, rental, but the world doesn't know that. So I think it's really an educational thing. And I think with whatever polite wording, a pretty big sign near the front door. In addition to that, just to remind the people who come in and yeah, brown bag is during the day, and yeah, brown bag is part of the older adults, but it isn't exclusively. Income taxes isn't you going to see some young I mean, there are going to be people here during the day, you are younger, for very specific programs. So I think somehow a, a welcoming way to, a, you know, what the building's used for, in addition to a chronicle and cassette. Okay, but I think one thing I was wondering about is. And I agree with what my comrades here have <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> but I, uh, I also had a question about when you did mention the signing of the code of conduct. Uh, I'm just curious, and I may have missed it at some point, so forgive me, but I'm just curious. Because that's a new policy, when I'm curious about is that for all new members after a certain date, or was there a process by which it went back to everybody who's already a member and were asked to sign? It's not a new policy. No, well, the oh, new, sign. new it's for everyone, new everyone that to we, sign. Everybody, when they key in, yeah. is, is given the opportunity to see that there's a code of conduct for them to sign. Every time one of us signs in, every time we sign the computer. So it's, yeah. it, we want everybody to see it and to sign it. I don't know that how, how well it's been. And it's posted around the building, but new members would be given this. That's what I'm curious about members. So new members starting from like January 1st or? or We're January asking January. all members to sign it. On the, when you scan in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, and then we're giving it to The reality members. check is, Click yes, move on. People, I agree with your point, Jerry. I think it needs to be bigger. It needs to be more broadcast. People aren't going to all the fine details of that very compact document. So I think, I think whatever we can do proactively, yeah, to just that's the bottom line. Get people in, in a number of ways so that you can point when something happens again. I want. I just thought that maybe you 
you have been signed on the Torah would be a good idea because the people who are going to look at that are the people who are the members, assuming, you know, that they're paying attention. But the people who are talking about probably not members and they're not going to have seen this part of content. Right. So I wondered if, like, on the door, if there was, like, a way of just saying, you know, that we, we are here, that you know, Hampton probably serves all um, people, all, all of its members, um, Five and older, or sixty, or whatever, you know, whatever. Um, all others, please check in at the desk. Mm -hmm. And I mean that at least, because then there would be somebody there who could like say, "I hear you. That's why. I, but that's if you know, you're here to accompany someone, something because they need a caregiver." Right. right. Thank you. Here's your visitor pass. Yeah. I mean, because that's in the schools. That's what yeah. Yeah. In parallel. Right? yeah. I mean, everybody got this slapped on a visitor mm -hmm. pass, but um, but at least. You know, it, I, I feel as if there ought to be a way that you can function like a thing that says yes. You know, like that there ought to be, I understand that you have to like hone, narrow the field and that, you know, that people can't wander in off the street and all that. But it feels like they're also, in order to serve seniors, I feel like we have to be able to also allow a guesting in for a good reason. And we, yeah, we, we haven't asked guests to leave um, unless they've but that, but been that using, they're in, like we found, you know, like a woman in her 40s with you know, an older man in the computer room using the computers and we say, you have to be a member to use the computer room, and you have to be a senior right. to be a but member. Those, so these so. are all things that, mm -hmm. if, if guests had to like just sign to so the guest mm -hmm. book, the time in and the time out, mm -hmm. and who they were the guests of, mm -hmm. why even does this? You know, like mm -hmm. then, then there would be a thing that they where they could understand what what they are right. allowed to do while they're here, and that's you know, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know. We need to implement some things now, and we also will be, when we are doing our space use assessment with an architect with the capital planning, the capital improvement funding when we get that, we will be looking at how our space is set up so that we can better engage people as they come into the building, because right now it isn't really set up in a way that is engaging or helps you to orient when you come in to someone who can direct you to where you need to go. It's really just an expansion of being clear of like you didn't have the conduct. You know, it's yes. just an expansion of just making things clear because mm -hmm. that way people know what the rules are and then they can know not to you. We have to be careful with guests that guests are not are not allowed like in the classrooms. They can't take the class, they can't be in the gym. Right, so we have to but delineate this yes, gives, this gives to, them a place where know, they can be given information yes. and um and you know, if it ends up being just a little card that people get, you know, along with it, to, to take if they choose to, you know, mm -hmm. but um, but it just it feels like there's a lack of clarification. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and I and we will be trying to implement some things, and we're looking at, um, you know, all the ways that we encounter new members and help them orient and how we welcome them and. The messages that we're giving them mm -hmm. about the way things are conducted here because I think there's been a lack of consistency and there's been a few different you know there's been a couple different directors before me who've done things differently than each other even so things have changed a lot over the years um, and I think that people are not sure um, and so that's we are creating policy so some people are Kind of saying like well why is it changing or i didn't ever know like people thought this code of conduct they didn't even some of them didn't even know we ever had one before they thought we just created all these rules and in fact we we actually just added vaping to the, <laughs> the rules that were already in place um so um but i i think also you can we all know that you can give and give and give information and not everyone takes it in or reads it right. or pay you know so but when we, don't give it, nobody yeah, we are giving it so we just haven't huh. fixed all the problems yet and we when we encounter someone who doesn't have the information or hasn't paid attention they don't all they feel they may feel like that's punitive because it's 
different than what they're used to. Um, so what I'm trying to do is to make sure that we're explaining why, why we have policies, why, you know, some people take offense at having a code of conduct because they don't misbehave and so they don't need rules. And we say, well, some people do need rules and, and every institution needs to have some guidelines Everywhere you go, people have guidelines about what's expected in a building. You can't bring a dog in this building. You can in this one. You know, so um, it's it's all it's all meant with the best of intentions, and it's because we all have to get along in this space. Okay, can we move on? Yeah, I just want to say I I think that Jean's analogy to schools. So I've been going through my head, you know, a school is a public building, but none of us can just walk in and out of it um, willy-nilly. And I, I love the idea of a guest sticker. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Kathy, your question, you know, if I'm a guest, it's pretty clear. I got an orange stick, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm visible. Right. And you're not going to have me start taking tap dancing. Because um, the idea? floor sticks. But no. I, think, I think there's kind of things to just sort of hold. And yes, the code of conduct is there. Some people are going to read it, and most people are not. So if people forget, yeah, how is that? Well, it, it, door and door. Have the code of conduct lets us go back and say to people, sure. you know, okay. we do, we did have this. You may have missed it because we are we are getting a lot of different negative complaints from people as we move forward here and, and use the space as best we can at the senior center. And, you know, um, just, you know, just off, you know, to address the the dancers, we cannot ask every dancer what their opinion is and incorporate it into the program at the senior center. It's just not feasible, you know. It, and then, so when pro, when things change, then you're going to hear what other sure. people have to say about it, which is fine, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the change the way they like it or the way it, it is. It does. Um, I don't want to belabor the point because I know we need to get on, but I would just want to second what everybody has said in terms of uh, refocusing the topic as policy on guests under 55. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like what, I mean, I had said earlier, you shouldn't have to state the obvious, but like you said, Michael, well, sometimes you do because it's uh, what's obvious to one is not to right. another. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was thinking maybe in one of your articles in the Chronicle, do what you had suggested, Kathy, start there of... Uh, so you understand the senior center is for seniors and their programming is for seniors. You may see some other people who are not. They are not guests. They are not caregivers. They come for specific, but you know, something that's very clear about that. Um, and so I would second, you know, yeah. what the both of you said. And then the third thing I would, thir the third thing I would third would be, uh, uh, like you had said, Kathy, it's very difficult to go. Are you a senior? Right. You know, I mean, but I, mean, I think a better way to do it, piggybacking on the Gene and your Cynthia's mm. thing about guests, is um, are you a member of the senior center? Because then you have to be a senior. So if you know, mm. we understand that workers, DPW workers, may come and get their lunch, and they're coming, they're going. But an easy way to say is, are you a member of it? And it's mm. much, it's much harder for them to lie about that I, maybe, I, maybe i'm wrong about that but right well some people aren't members and are coming for like a yeah. one-time event well, yeah, yeah, or maybe yeah, they get an event to bring the opening oh no would you like to sign up here's what right. let me shut let me have right. you but it's a great opening to that right. there are municipal meetings and stuff there had been in the past i don't know if they're not doing it now right there are municipal meetings here during the day right. um but but I don't think we should be afraid to ask people if they are yeah. seniors because we also have pricing for things that are as different mm -hmm. for seniors and non-seniors. Um, and the lunches, the programming, um, if you're not a senior, you pay a little bit more. And maybe it's a blue dot on my lapel if I'm here for a municipal meeting. Something, mm -hmm. again, you know, mm -hmm. everyone does those kinds of things these days. You know, as much for security, et cetera, as anything mm -hmm. else. Those okay. identifiers. I would like yeah. to move on to the Golden Age meal tax exception. So I realized after um, the we signed forms to send in that we had just changed the bylaws to take the treasurer out of our bylaws and and they require that we have a treasurer so um, uh, I didn't send it in yet so now I'm uh, 
Dennis was suggesting that maybe I just have a letter come from the financial director from the city, and that might take care of it. So. Saying we actually have no funds. There's no treasurer, treasury for the treasurer to treasure. And that, in fact, everything goes through the finance department. So my suggestion is hopefully. Um, and so I will, I will do that, and that if we were to get that, then we would definitely need to card people because only seniors would get tax-free. Right. Okay. You have your tax-free card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to new business. Increasing the uh, Council on Aging member visibility, introduction of members through the Chronicle articles, mechanism for public feedback. Yeah, okay, so um, what I had spoken with Jamie Ann and Marie about, um, and other people, was since a lot of new people were new in the console, it's like people don't know who we are, what we do, that was part of the confusion, some of the confusion that's out there. Um, so I had broached the um, subject of, well, why don't we introduce who we are and what we do, um, which was the first article that Jerry and I, and I put in the, um, in the Chronicle to say this is a, uh, who we are, this is what our mission is, this is what we do, we're going to introduce uh, people as we go through the following Chronicle months. Um, the Marie contacted the mayor's office who set up an email for us that currently is um, uh, goes to Jerry Ann because it can't go to everybody the way the IT, you know, so if, if people want to contact the council, they can email, there's an actual address that goes to Jerry Ann. Um, and is that in the article? Yeah, that was in the article yes, as well. It, yeah, the, the, uh, the address That's is, how people will know. Yeah, that's how people know it was in there yeah. as well. So then I contacted, um, uh, our Eliana responded from here saying, um, we definitely have room for a column every month. For space, generally 350 to 450 words is about right, but we could extend it a bit if we needed. Um, the deadline, uh, they changed the deadlines so it's too late for March because it was, um, well, it's March 1st. So the deadline for writing is March 1st, April 1st, so be in the first of the month. So what I wanted to do was approach that to everybody saying this is what we were hoping to do and get volunteers to sign up maybe two or three at a time, you know, from March 1st, April 1st, that just says a little bit about, hi, this is who I am. I joined the console for whatever, you know, whatever you want to say about yourself. Um, and then that way, uh, we can also get that same email address. Mm -hmm. If you wish to contact it, you know, give it out there in multiple chronicles about how to get uh, feedback. Um, and then um, Jerry Ann and Marie and I had talked. I said, some feedback, obviously, it's, you know, I think you're all crazy and you don't do anything. Well, well you know, we wouldn't necessarily share that. Some things, that's an easy answer. I was wondering about this. Actually, if you contact the volunteer coordinator and we shuttle it off to Kim. So other things where it might actually be brought to the council, then Jerry Ann and I and Marie might talk and say, oh, this seems to be a legitimate thing to add to the agenda. And then we would add it to the agenda um, to bring whatever that issue, concern, or, or a matter was to the whole council, and then it would be on the agenda. So that was sort of the big picture thing of what we were thinking about. Oh, okay. Is there a suggestion box here? Yeah, there is. So uh, would that be, would that be a thing that you, could you, do we need to do something more than we have a suggestion box? Well, that, that's what this will serve is, um, so we are gonna put it in the, the inside cover of the Chronicle oh. under the listing of all the board members that it, we're gonna put it there. So it'll be in every issue that says, this is the way that you can contact the council, con contact the council um, and when our meetings are and stuff like that. But um, the suggestion box doesn't really serve the purpose of that it should. Um, people often, I mean, I think some people just, they don't want to identify themselves, so they just complain in it and they don't say, you know, I want to talk to you about this or I, you know, I can't give them an answer because they don't identify themselves. So. Um, I just felt like there needs to be a mechanism for people to actually bring something forward. Um, and I thought it might be helpful if it's not just 
me having to respond, but that it can be brought to the board oh. or the council. Yeah, thank you. Kathy? So the suggestion box is just who reads it? I mean, so are we doing away with that? And then who reads it? No, the we're not doing away with it. Who reads the suggestions? Who I do. Okay. I do. And mm -hmm. it, um, it's, it's, you know, sometimes uh, there's useful stuff in there, but mostly I think that it serves as sort of a, a venting box. Yeah, right. And there's no name again. And we have received email. And I've received message. I have a mailbox now too in, in the office, so we are getting feedback. We did get at least one email. That's how we got one thing about regarding the floor. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it is working. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just make a suggestion? I'm focusing on you, Dennis. Is rather than to take for like ten months to introduce the board, can we just do one article? Yeah. With a short, you know, we people don't need to know five hundred things. Yeah, I'm open to whatever works. Yeah, just a little group. Maybe you should have got the whole group at one time. Maybe we can have a group photo and figure out, you know, yeah. x number of words, basically, you know, a little bit of that background. Well, we have up to four hundred and fifty word, uh, totally. words for one article. Would you like to do that? For one article. Like for one article. Write a little article. Well, so well, I think as much space as we need, right? I I guess what you were thinking was that it would also be a way for the council to tell people about the issues that the council is addressing or that or a little bit about or, yourself. It could be anything. You're right. It doesn't have to go on and on. I just wanted to have people know who you were, what the photo your photograph would be, and like ours were. So and people, then they. Can come. They then right. they know who you are and they can right. approach I, I you get and that say. Right. But I'm, I was sort of suggesting. Can we do it just once? Can we just yeah. do it once? Get everyone yeah. in there. Get more space in our own paper. Um, right. And then Article Three is about some of the issues right. that are coming up. We don't all have to right. identify individual issues. Mm -hmm. You think it'd be more efficient to have everyone identify the same. No, I like that better too. But I was going <laughs> along with. Yeah, we're just with, uh, more space. If we can, yeah, if we don't have enough space, and, yeah. but I'm open to that. If we can get a little more space. Take so maybe for the, <laughs> it might be a, or if the deadline is March 1st, if everybody just sends to Jerry Ann. Can you just email us a little form? So I mean, how many characters you need? Yeah, like a couple say, of lines about who you, you are. Then back in one email and then right. cut and paste. We're just sending in tweets. <laughs> yeah, you could do a tweet. Right? <laughs> there you go. You could use you that. Uh, Casey, you had a question? Well, I was thinking, what if we, so what if there was a list of questions? And we kind of answered them. So okay. everybody has sort of, yeah. Yeah, they're getting the same kind of information yeah. about each it. of us. Not oh, like, yeah. you know, it's you know so it doesn't kind of wander sure. off. It's right. right, exactly. My dog's name is Rover. Exactly. I mean, maybe <laughs> you have pets, so we all answer them, but not just my dog's name is Rover and completely <laughs> random information about people, but think, you know, things that we think. Be good. And just a quick I list of questions. I wonder and if, then if we hide, but I come to the building. Right? <laughs> every we, every month. Um, but even if we did, um, if it was a space consideration, then even if we did half in March and half right. in April, right. then right. it gets us out there That's twice good. with yeah. some information. And yeah, I like that. But we're all doing yeah. No, we're not too late so. for March. So if so there's. That's April, so we see how much we're in April. So March 1st and April 1st. So there's 14 of us. We've already done two. So if we did six well, and six, six, and six, does that sound good? Yeah. No, thirteen. Fourteen. Well, oh no, they're thirteen. You're right. Sorry, math is not my strong suit. So eleven. So five and six. <laughs> well, we marking changed up to internet. What about the math doesn't come? So does that? That's still true. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, we could, I could just contact her and say, here's what we have. Can, can this work? But I like your idea of get, just getting it over with, so to speak. <laughs> Do you want volunteers to be who the first six will be at this point? In, in no, the well, plans, we'll we'll find out a few three. questions. We'll figure out how much okay. yeah. space you can. And see what the answers <coughs> are, and then we'll figure, we can count the words. So I was going to get oh, it from everybody. She has a different right. question, though. Oh, yeah. oh, you're saying get everybody's, and then yes. how right. did you decide who goes first? Or you may be able to do everybody. If everybody answers the questions and it's 600 words, Eliana may say, oh, well, can no, I can through? do that. Okay. That's what I meant. Thank you. Versus a thousand words. No, now it's two five hundred. Yeah. We'll take one hundred words from Marie. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing Marie. We're doing this. No, she's no saying words from. Oh, from her. Oh, from her. Oh, hers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to That's the uh, membership orientation packet materials, which are in front of you. And so um, this is just an expansion of what I brought up a couple of months ago. So what I did was took the liberty before I went away on vacation um, to just put the basic things that we talked about. Um, and you know, so it, you know, the table of contents explains everything. There should be copies of everything in there, so you understand. Um, some things may not apply, but you want so that you understand the meeting call to order standard language. Who's ever doing that? You know, there's the template for what the uh, agenda is going to look like. Um, then what I did was I took the um, uh, what's the name of that organization? The guide, the executive office of the elder affairs guide, which half of it didn't apply to us, and then we rewrote it. Um, for an NCO member guide role and responses. So like you were talking about, Gene, it's like I read the, the executive office one, but it didn't apply, so it made it apply to us. And then I just included you know, the bylaws, the code of con, all that kind of stuff. Then it was all of the legal things that were required to, to do, which is the open meeting law, the conflict of interest, the state summary. Then I added other resources um, you know, that we know about Elder Vision, Highland Valley, Northampton neighbors. So there's just little words about that at the end. I had talked to a few members about, well, could we have all of the resources that the Senior Center and the Senior Services Department gives, um, which was a good idea, except for that gets just to be too much. So I put your informational additions reference that you can do. Uh, so if you want to pick up about the senior work program and add it, because the staff here is going to have to maintain this going forward, so I didn't want to have as, as information got outdated, changed, contact numbers. Just This is just the basic of who we are, what we do, this is the rules we're supposed to follow, and then you can put anything else you want in there. So that was sort of the guiding. Sorry, yes, it's, I sent everything here so that they can maintain it. <laughs> and so you do talk about the EOEA, right? So people know what that is. Uh, and it's one of the sections. I can't remember off the top I think of that. Right. Okay, but yeah. All right. That so, right. Maybe uh, right. Yeah. EOEA. Right here. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Actually, it's not, it's not here. Right. That's right. It's Elder Vision, Highland Valley, Northampton Neighbors. I think it's awesome. Some of that's a question. I just feel it needs to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it was almost like, yeah, yes, there, you know. So I'm glad you, you found it. I'm not saying anything bad. It's just that sometimes I get a certain feeling because I know we're short on time, but yet at the same time, it's process versus task. <laughs> and and sometimes we get too task oriented, I think. So you need to add a blurb for that elder affair. Yeah. And it's not on the flow chart, right. but yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, well, they are. And and they we're taking some data. You're finally connected with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe yeah. for people to know it, you know, we always get it. Um, I think this took a lot of time and effort for you to uh, produce this. And it looks wonderful. And thank you. For you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. It, it did. Yeah. <laughs> we're grateful. We are very grateful. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And and it, it was too tight to actually put in these, so um, uh, to put in these red binders. So mm -hmm. put it in some.
something else if you like. But mm -hmm. I'll send the replacement pages with E O E O. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. All right, assistant director. Yeah, right. assistant director's report, Kim. Yay. Well, first of all, thank you to everybody, all of our volunteers. Um, just to let you know, volunteer recruitment is an ongoing process. Happy to report that over the past about week and a half, I've met or talked to with six or seven new volunteers that we're trying to match uh, their passions and interests with some needs here. Uh, we have uh, a need at the moment for dispatch, um, so I'm going to specifically be trying to recruit for that uh, to help set up rides uh, to appointments. Um, also, an ongoing need for uh, bistro and coffee shop, just to make sure that we've got all of those openings covered, um, and also have a couple subs in place as well, so that if a volunteer can come in on a given day, that we've got some resources, some people that we can call to help cover that. Um, as of right now, of all, all of our reception blocks of time are filled, which are great. Ooh, we do have yeah, a couple, yeah. that's a big, yeah. big plus. Um, and we do have a couple of people as well that we can call for subs and that are flexible with our schedule. Um, certainly doesn't hurt to recruit a few more receptionists as we go, especially as we look at how we're welcoming new, new patrons and some of the new initiatives we have going, we'll be adding as we go. Uh, the two focus groups that are meeting, just to give you a short update uh, for them, uh, the arts and culture focus group right now has a total of eight people interested in that. Uh, the next meeting is going to be on Wednesday, March 6th. Um, we're having a little bit of a struggle to find the ideal time for everyone to participate. I think we're going to try and meet the first week of the month and just kind of settle either Wednesday morning or afternoon. Seems to be the best at this point, but we'll continue to kind of massage that a little bit to see what works best for everyone. Uh, the movie committee is also also has eight members. Eight's the magic number on these two focus groups so far. <laughs> uh, the movie committee is meeting the last Thursday of every month at 12.30, and they officially now are choosing the movies uh, for the Thursday movie matinees, so they're up and running um, as well with that. And hopefully we'll get some people involved in also helping to pick the movies up and kind of be involved in each of those um, Parts of the process, not just selecting the movies itself, but helping to introduce the movies and, and you know every every piece of it from start to finish. Uh, they also are interested in doing some discussion groups. Um, so there'll be uh, two showings of two different versions of *A Star Is Born*, followed by a discussion group of compare and contrast. And so they've got a lot of great ideas around different themes and different uh, different pieces just to, to build upon the movie itself. I think for me, that's about it for the moment. I, again, recruiting is going to be ongoing. Um, I did set up in the lobby for a little bit to talk about some volunteer opportunities and spoke with a few people, and I'll continue to schedule those kind of interspersed as we move forward to make sure that we've got the people on board to help. Quick question. Are volunteers necessarily all seniors? No. 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 Majority are. Majority are. But you can be a volunteer if you're not a senior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can volunteers use resources in the center? No. No. Unless they're senior. Unless they're senior. Right. Unless they're senior. Non senior. Non senior. Right. And the other thing, too, just to add is we're in the process of updating the volunteer manual and handbook and putting uh, onboarding training in place as well. Um, so that's really an area over the next couple of weeks that I'll be focusing on um, so that it'll be a general training for all volunteers as well as then some specific training depending on the role that volunteers will have as well. Um, so whether it's reception or coffee shop or dispatch, uh, medical transportation, any piece of that, you know, there's obviously specific to those roles. I uh, will cover that. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks I'll be able to give you an update on the process of that. Directors. So, um, I guess I'll start with the capital improvement request. Uh, the mayor did send it on to city council and it will be reviewed and voted on. I'm guessing it will be decided on hopefully the 21st. Um, and so, uh, most of my requests went through so that I will, they're on it. They, they weren't taken off um, in his his um, draft that he sent on to them. So the they request I made for um, improvements around technology is on um, going forward for their review and for the um, architect design work on use of space here, um, especially in the lobby and reception area. So, so the technology, I was wondering the same. 
So upgrades. So, for instance, um, we probably need to upgrade the projector oh, okay. that's in the in the great room. We all, all we, technology, not just all technology. So okay. any kind of communications, yes. um, you know, we'd like to have more sign, you know, screens that have signage. Um, also, our um, I I requested um, funding to have laptops that people can check out rather than just having um, desktops because I think that. Um, you know, where the computer room doesn't get, you know, there are like 12 computers in there and they, they don't all get used. And then I think that people do want to sit in the cafe or sit in the lobby or we can then do a class in any room. Not out of the building. No. <laughs> I was wondering that too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I have two things. Um, first one but um, if you do do you know for laptops to make sure you, you check out on electrical outlets if people want to come in because it's pretty limited in the coffee shop and then the, um, the oh the who is the architect that you're working with that we're working with we haven't gotten so, the funding yet okay. so we don't okay have okay an and will they have um, they'll have age friendly you know be like mm -hmm. designated as knowing how to work with people and age friendly Absolutely. Because not all architects are each friend, just like builders. <laughs> yes. Or have an understanding of how to welcome people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Anything yeah. else with the capital improvements? Or, or, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I think if we made it possible for people to give suggestions about the space, people who, you know, like us or anybody who's spent time here who has an idea about what would be helpful. We could get ideas from the public. Definitely. I mean, I think we um, the whole process of going through that with the architect will be to look at how we engage, how people engage with the space and the programming and how they come into the building and how we, our front desk is serving or not serving well. Um, so, but it's also just looking at, um, Upgrades, so like this paint, we haven't had any fresh paint for 12 years, and we haven't, we have carpeting that needs to be replaced. And so, you know, kind of looking at um, refreshing and also thinking about if there's some things that we need to change that would make the space work better than it, than it has been. So we will be asking. We, we probably will form some some focus groups. Is what I'm thinking. Um, well, I I guess um, I just wanted to. Well, one of the things that that didn't go through that maybe we want to ask Elder Vision for is that I requested furniture for outside so that we can have outdoor seating for, for people to, you know, hang out. Um, I feel like the building is not as welcoming in its appearance either from the outside that we could have plants and seating outside and people could have lunch outside and play cards outside or play chess outside. and. Um, that we also have a green space at the end of this building that can be used um, in, in a better way, like that it's not being utilized um, very much. And so um, I, you know, I just uh, would like to purchase some furniture that can be, uh, that wouldn't be left out all the time, but it would be uh, available for people to, to also use the outdoor space here. Um, and, and again, I can't help but say make sure that people can get in their chairs if they're age friendly. Yes. Um, and the other, the, the other thing was that I I'd asked for all new toilets because they're too low. Okay. So um, yes, that that is always first on my mind okay. <laughs> as the director of aging services is that it be yeah. age friendly. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you had to itemize what? you wanted for capital improvements. Now, what Donna said, you were saying, ask people in the public what they wanted as capital improvements? Is no, that what you said? The architecture. Oh, uh, about it each, yeah, yeah okay. what would, what people like and don't like, yeah, and okay. if oh, they have what, ideas. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get that clear, because I wasn't sure about that. Right. No. That's, 
Um, I just wanted to piggyback on that. I think it's a great thing for Elder Vision. But I've been thinking for some time when I was in New York at the Met Life buildings down on Avenue C, which is up. Um, the outdoor state, I mean, it's, you, you feel like you're in a park in the middle of the city because the buildings are on the outside. But um, the point for me would be they had permanent like cement checkers chest things that were built out so yeah. you don't have to bring things in and out mm -hmm. that and, and they had a bunch of other stuff and, and the place was filled with people sitting playing games the you know kids were doing this and i thought a few what i would call permanent kind of things sure. so that all that people have to do is bring their chest pieces or bring their backhand pieces or bring their whatever mm -hmm. I think it's seven to seven what the updated Pulaski Park that's permanently out there. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so um I am working with Western Mass pollinators um on some programming um around getting people involved in what they're trying to do is build a pollinator pathway throughout mm -hmm. the city and that this would be one of the hubs. Um but that we would also have some potentially some raised garden beds here um, that we might be able to have, you know, an herb garden for cooking and things like that. But um, but also potentially redesigning the, the park, the little park space that we have to allow for more outdoor seating and more pollinator plants. So, um, so I'm sort of looking at all of those kinds of things, indoor and outdoor. Um, and then we've been adding um, a lot of programming, um, so much that we um, were sort of short on space, <laughs> um, which is a good thing. And um, the upgrade of the old library into an art studio is going to be finished before the end of March. Uh, but before then, we've even already started having um, different kinds of classes in there. Um, and so I don't know if people are aware of you know, you see in the Chronicle, but, um, you know, we had a ukulele class and then we needed to add two and three more and now we're adding drumming and we're, so um, things that people are participating in are, you know, filling up and then we're, we're really seeing that people are responding. So that gives us a lot of information about what we need to be that day. So. so, bird feeders, I think would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's a rule about um, bears and bird feeders, right? But yeah, um, we would just have to make sure that. Um, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. There are. I don't people know there's a lot of. Bears <laughs> there's a lot of birds living in the um, overhang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in the in the the wraparound driveway. In the, yeah. There's also nobody that really takes care of our gardens, correct? I mean, it's been oh, years. Well, we do have some volunteers, yeah. 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 But the city does. The city does maintain. But I will be meeting with we need David Palmer. We need weird people to weed. Yeah. 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 And that's right. hard for older people to do. Yeah. With the reese. But I like that reese. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the existing I understood part, what you were referring to. Yeah. That's the existing. Well, another use for raised beds is so people don't have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, anything else people want to bring up, Jane? I hate to want to decide because I know that, um, that it, it was my understanding. I think the neighbors is looking for a new site. Mm -hmm. Can you raise your voice a little bit? Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little louder? Oh, no, I think the neighbors is looking for a new site. I just thought, like, I think it's good for everybody to just have an idea about what, what is centered here. So um, I, I thought I would bring just mention that. And the other thing is that um, I wondered if you could. What, you know, the people who came in to talk about the tap jeans or, um, I, I, I'd like to, I wonder if we could, you could just tell us who manufactured the floor and like, because I'd like to at least go online and see if there's complaints from other places or if there are ways that, um, the installation could affect the sound, you know, um, because that they presented a very well organized mm -hmm. and thoughtful um, amount of information, and I, I'd like to take the time mm -hmm. to examine what they had to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Um, so I did that, um, getting some more information. So the flooring, apart from the $3,000 that it cost to refinish, it was $1,200. It's called Marley, M-A-R-L-E-Y. If you go online, it's, it's, say, it's the world's largest professional dance for dance troops, venues, Broadway, New York. Um, they have multiple products um, specifically for dance, ballroom um, sort of thing. So it's not a fly-by-night thing. I don't know what kind. I do want to go look because they have multiple products. Um, I mean, but I even on their website, it says for tap specifically, it says uh, um, if 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 the taps are scratched, it may damage even their flooring. So I mean, it has it right on their product specifications when I look at it. Um, and so when the Northampton Arts Trust um, and I don't, I don't I got that information at home in conjunction with another person made the recommendation oh, so, for... So Lisa and probably Jen Collins? No, Joanne. I can't remember her name. But anyway, so... Well, yeah. I mean, having had a very small amount of damp go to my background, it is not very satisfying not to hear a yeah. the right sound. I think anyway, it's, it's also a matter -Y. of what they're yeah. used to. Yeah. And that it's a matter of adjusting to something different right. than they're used to. But wherever tap dancers go to perform, like at Academy of Music, they have to bring their own flooring. And this is the kind of flooring that they have to bring, uh -huh. yeah, that they would be bringing. Right. And so um, I guess I don't want to... Um, I don't want to give you the impression that there is another there's there's any recourse here. There's not another choice. We've we've purchased special flooring that's for tap dancers. That's for, for them. Tap dancers. I do on there now, really. But but the, the safety issues you mentioned earlier. Right. So well, I heard so that. There's, I, there's a way to deal with safety. Yes, right? that seems to be a we would install it wall to wall in a room, and it would be for they would be able to use the whole room, right. and we've been planning to do it in the front room, and then that way they have what they need, and everyone else who uses the other room can have what they need. Um, I don't really know what else to do. I mean, I, I, I feel like we've purchased high-end tap dancing flooring. <laughs> I right. don't, so what was the feedback you said that you consulted with they, the, the instructor? Carol. Uh, Carol, um, she she um, agreed to use the flooring. She agreed, agreed to to try and encourage her class to be open minded about it. Um, but um, it's not what she's used to either. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, it's a wood floor that is being damaged, and the okay, mayor okay. feels I should protect it and. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to meet a lot of different groups' needs, and um, it's what other dance studios are doing, so I don't really know what else to do. I can't put in another wood floor that, just for them. Um, Kathy, did you have a question? I, I, I did, and, and I appreciate that the, the difficulty of, of the situation. I mean, no way to micromanage, but I did go on the site, and um, it seemed like 90% of the floors that they talked about on the site said wow. great flooring for everything except tap. Mm -hmm. Is it, and, and you've probably already looked at this, but let me just get it out of my system. Is it at all possible that we got the wrong flooring inadvertently? Is it possible that the the numbers or something mm -hmm. something happened and we didn't get the right flooring that is I, tap? Is it at all possible? I will check into it, but yeah. my assistant um, did the research. She spoke to them. They um, they recommended this flooring for tap. For tap, we bought remnants. Um, and so we cannot return them. That was the other thing I was going to ask. Is there any warranty period? Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of recourse in terms of mm -hmm. that this is not, no. it's not something that is satisfactory? Um, that you said it was for tap, and yet we're 
Mm -hmm. Like, could an argument been, be made to return it to them at all? We can't return it, whether it's the wrong flooring or not. But it sounds really like some of the other concerns that were mentioned consistently were the safety issues, which are yeah. going to be addressed in, in the long run. And the space being smaller is going to be addressed. So those two are going to come off the table. Yes. And the floor is the floor, and it sounds like it's an adjustment period. And it's going to address the yoga and the Tai Chi because they're going to be able to use the wooden floor. They, they, you know, it's not like the wooden floor is not going to be used. It's just not going to be beat up by tap. And what Dennis said was really interesting that, that I didn't realize is that if your taps are old and they're, 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 they could, you know, we can't monitor what people have on their shoes. Mm -hmm. So if they're old taps and they're... Well, we can maybe, require them to have new taps, but I still think it would damage but, the yeah, but floor. That's another thing that we haven't monitored is how, whose shoes are, are ruining the floor. There could be some that have, you know, sharp edges or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't even thought about that. Mm -hmm. but, well, they, yeah. Yeah, they have to take a lot of wood off. I'll just tell you yeah. that, that um, I should have taken a before and after picture, but... And, I also think it's not a plastic floor. I know somebody talked twice about it being plastic. I think it's a rubber floor. It's, it's like marmoleum or something. It's a composite. Um, yeah. Um, but it's a floor made for tap. I mean, not, I'm not a tap floor expert. That's for damn sure. So. But, well, Google Marley. I mean, yeah, I really want well, to you'll find out more than you need to know. Well, and yeah. so I had, I had been looking when they were talking, and Marley is actually similar to, if you're talking a Marley floor, that's like talking about a jacuzzi. Marley is a brand name, right. which actually is not right. available at all anymore, oh. the brand name, but they still work everything off of that. But then I'm just looking at this rubber flooring ink, and the only one that's made for yeah. tap is... Adagio. Um, they have lots of other ones that are a little bit like this and a little bit like that, but they're not really made for tap. And you know, I mean, it's yeah, it's so just. That's, that's I think it. I think we should make sure. Did we get the right, right. thing? And if we didn't, right. they have a valid. Not if it's a remnant. Huh. Uh, she said it's a remnant. Well, it's a remnant, but was right. The but it should still the have a remnant, remnant for right. the knee. Is right. The question. Okay, um, I would think it's from Stage Step is the name yeah. of the company. The name of the company. Right. They also sell Roscoe. And what was it called? What, do we have a name Stage of the actual Step. product? Is what we're looking for, not the okay. seller, but the actual product. The model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I recognize Donna, please. Mm -hmm. The Zumba class has been using it since it was installed, and it was it's fine to dance on in that. Uh, kind of for a Zumba class, mm -hmm. there it hasn't there haven't been any problems with it, and actually the Zumba teacher was familiar with that that kind of floor being used for dance purposes. Mm -hmm. So I think we take the safety issues off. I think off the safety floor. issues mm -hmm. because it's not covering the entire floor. floor. That's the only yeah. thing I can think of that it's. I mean, right. because well, it's, that's what I need to respond to. And we never intended for it to be in there yeah. this long. No. Okay. Well, my, my, my point was really that I felt like we should have a discussion about right. there was a lot of information presented to us as board members and um, kind of it felt you know, we should like, felt like we glossed over it. Yeah. yeah, we just moved on. So, so, well, we weren't supposed to. We're not supposed like, to we're not discuss it. Not in front of all. I didn't, I didn't mean it. This is an other. <laughs> but why have it be presented if we're not going to, you know, discuss it? Yes. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, the point of public comment is for them to make a public comment. But I understand that, you know, for us listening, it was like, well, they raised valid points or points that we have questions about. At some point, they want to have an answer to this. Um, um, uh, you know, an answer to this. I got some of the answers to respond to this, Mr. A Mr. Adams has sent a very short thing, which is where I got the information about the dance floor, the cost, that sort of thing. I have a little more information, I just didn't bring it with me. So, uh, I, if what I hear you're saying is, can we put it on the agenda to discuss and can, uh, so that we have an understanding, so that if nothing else, we also can explain to people, well, here's, 
here's the facts, you know, because there's people's feelings and emotions about it, and they're all completely valid. And, uh, you know, because that's the way they feel. It's, that it's not right or wrong, or it's not wood. Yes, it's not wood, uh, you know, but then the question is, well, you know, do real tappers tap on it? Like you said, Casey, um, you know, when I did my research, uh, they still sell things, but it's also Roscoe's. I'm not sure what you're looking at, but, um, but, it's, but we have bought it through, um, like you had said, second, second step. Second step. Um, stage step. But it said, stage step. But it said, specifically, tap something, something, something. But they had different floorings for different kind of dances. And so the answer I didn't know was, what was the particular remnants that we right. got? Because they have like That's eight different products. Right. Yeah. Roscoe has another seven different products. Uh, which is not, you know, in that part I don't know. But, but they, they but they told Joanne. Yeah, they told we Joanne. Were, we right. were, we Joanne, were that's her name. Joanne Brooks. Oh, staff she's the, oh, here. oh, okay. She, oh, I thought she was Joanne at the. You know, Roger. Joanne Brooks. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. Well, so the dance company, floor company, recommended this flooring and had remnants. Um, and and we, have, we have enough to cover the whole floor. Yes. Back in its right location. Yes. yes. Where, what room is going to be the right the front room? So what I would like to do is install it in the front room, as a in a temporary way, so that when we do the space use study, if it is determined that it would be better to have it in another room, that we can take it up and move it. But it but it would be being used, and it would be available for tap to happen um and then if we decide that's going to stay there then we'll ins we'll make sure we install it permanently but um the activity room then will just be wood it will be a, a no street shoes room people who are doing yoga will not be lying down on grit um and it will, you know, I've ordered a lot of benches so people can change into their, their workout shoes. Um, we're just really trying to sort of upgrade the experience that people have when they come and work out, and this will serve a lot of different needs. Um, so, you know, they may not be happy with this, um, but I do think that they will adjust to the sound. It's just different. And, some other places have tried things like um, um, thin plywood and things like that, and actually dulls the sound more than this flooring. One of my friend's wife teaches tap that, or she used to teach, she retired, but um, he had made some kind of a wooden floor because he, um, Paul Arslanian, because they have tap dancers sometimes, mm -hmm. come with jazz, but you know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, he has, they have a wooden floor they put down on. On the um, at the at the place at the, at the spare time hole, but they put down another floor. Yeah. yeah. So, so jo Joanne um, spoke with several different places, um, so we didn't just talk to one person. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So maybe find like Jean's place. How did something happen? Can we respond to yeah. them, right? Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, like. Michael has a question or comment. <laughs> I have had some faith in Joanne that she did her homework. I have less faith in salespeople. <laughs> I wouldn't right. be surprised. I don't know that this happened. I wouldn't be surprised if we had some stuff there. Oh, shit, it's a sponsor path. We know. I think that mm -hmm. the questions that have been raised will allow us to speak to the people. I know three of them well. And I know they'll be on to me as friends and neighbors. If I can speak intelligently about the things that some of you have already learned, it just makes it easier to be a sort of ambassador mm -hmm. on behalf of this place. And I think that's all people are asking. Mm -hmm. Or interpreter. I'm not trying to question their judgment. Mm -hmm. Just saying I can do the work that I'm supposed to do as a constant mm -hmm. agent member more effectively the more I know. Mm -hmm. I appreciated what you said out before that already on me. Uh, to some extent, which raises the second thing. It's a little bit uh, out of order. You mentioned uh, before everybody got here this incident uh, with the man who was upset. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to let 
everybody know, only because Louis the Gazette, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't put something silly in the paper if he's going to the Gazette. So if we were full armed with what you know, we'd be able to address it. Uh, so I don't care how or when you do it, but if others knew what we heard, I mean, I feel armed, but I'm not sure everybody else would be able to respond. Somebody said, oh yeah, they kicked me out of Puerto Rican. What do you say if you don't know the history? You know what I mean? Right. Well, that didn't happen. I know it didn't happen. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm no, saying. I know. I'm just saying to the, to the room, that didn't happen. But how many people right. what this was? Yes. Am I the only person who didn't hear it? Yeah. Oh. No, so oh, I will, on camera. Um, so, um, Young and Hart performed this morning. Um, several people called and registered for lunch ahead of time. One of them had a four-year-old with them. Um, another person had um, family members who were probably in their 30s um, and I had to let them know that the dining room is reserved for people over 55 that we allow people who are not seniors to take lunch to go um, and that also this was not advertised as an event that you could bring your family to or bring children to um, that this was a senior only event and that is because if we opened up this event to the whole city with young at heart giving a free chorus we knew that we would not be able to accommodate that many people and that was not our agreement with bob silman um, we will have events that are open to the public we are having events that are open to the public and we will have events that are bring your family or bring your grandkid today or um read to a child, I'm talking with the school district about that, um, where we're bringing children into the building, but people will know that that's what's going on and they won't have to participate if they don't want to be around children and they will be able to participate if they do want to and they'll be able to bring their grandchildren, but we can't have people bringing children just to everything um, or bringing their children in, um, parking them here while they do other things in the building um it's just it's um we've it's not meant to be um you know off-putting in any way and so i didn't approach those people when they came to listen to the concert but when it came time to go into the dining room i felt that i needed to say something um but we we then were alerted to the fact that we there was an error in our advertising also mm -hmm. that that was confusing yeah. and so but this gentleman felt very um angry and upset um and did go to the mayor and threatened to go to the gazette so you know people don't want to be they don't they want to they think they don't think that the whole thing through they may have gotten misinformation they may have not been asked when they signed up on the phone the right questions and so we have to look at all the pieces of how things happen um, and all we can do is apologize and say we're sorry that this was your experience this is not how we intended things to go but these are the reasons why um, so anyway I, I I think that you know I'll, I'll, that things happen every week that people are upset about it's, it's just that's the nature of running a social service agency in a big city um, and so when you hear if someone approaches you with a complaint I think the the best thing to do is just tell me you have got this complaint or you've been asked these questions and I can give you information because you're hearing one side of it and sometimes people don't always understand all the all the reasons um, so and also they are seeing different things happening so they think that they're being discriminated against in some way because they're like well that person's here and that person's here and you know why am I being singled out but they might not understand so I will I will write an article for the Chronicle and, and, they, and people who know like I don't I think they're young at heart 
people, a lot of family, a lot of people come in to watch grandparent, blah, blah, blah. So it's unless somebody's a caretaker, you said, of somebody in the younger heart course, or somebody coming in that is watching them, then they shouldn't be there, um, being there during rehearsal. The younger heart course has been informed that they can't, they can't invite okay. people who okay. are under 55 to okay. come here. Okay. Um, they know that. The, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. yeah. Um, so, but, you know, I, I think that somebody bringing a four year old um, under the right circumstances is okay. a great thing. Yeah. Um, and I want to support that. And I don't know if you all remember, but when I first came on, everyone was afraid I was going to do those things. So I've been holding off a little bit. But um, I think we just need to we need to do those things in the right way, and we need to be thoughtful, just like we're trying to be thoughtful about everything that we're doing. Um, you know, and I, I also have to say, like, it's a little disheartening when we are working really hard to have people attacking us without all the information. So I, you know, we have to step back and say, okay, you don't have all the information, um, but people don't always want to hear what you have to say. So um, just know that we are, we are doing everything we can to keep people happy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually possible, but we're trying. You should have rented the Pines Theater for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would just say that because today, I mean, unfortunately, is, is a lesson for the next time the chorus selects to do a free concert in terms of managing expectations that this is not young at heart, free and open to the public. Right. And yeah. Very much a controlled environment for members of the senior center or whatever the right language Seniors is. Seniors coming to lunch and then, then have a quick right. concert. Right, the, the, the yeah. concert itself is yeah. a separate, it's a separate entity from lunch and how you manage that, I think mean, it's mm. unfortunate and it is, you know, there. Well, we advertised it as a come to the concert and come for right. lunch and, yeah. oh. um, and th those people were doing both. Yes. Yeah. So, and but, but, but I think it's, it's, it's a lesson because it's the chorus. Right. If it was <coughs> me and Michael singing, the one in the issue. Well, uh, no, 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 no. 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 That's not, not, that's not true because actually it, it happens in a lot of things. So uh, even today, that the chorus just, just attracts a much bigger yeah. crowd. Yeah, but it, it's ha it's happening oh, in sure. other yeah. in other events too, and I think people, you know, people want to have events where they can bring their family. Sure. And so we we clearly need to be doing more of that, and and so we will be. And I think that once we start to um, do that, it will sort of highlight. Oh, this is for when family, so maybe I need to ask this time because it doesn't say that. Like, so I just think that it speaks to a need that we need to fill. And so we, we're going to do that. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I would like to adjourn the meeting. People are ready. Anybody want to make a motion to do that? I move here, please. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Is there science they refer to? Hmm? Is there science that they refer to? There were, there, they, they say that there's partial science. You know, that they, that they admit that there's not an absolute scientific proof that this will absolutely work for the long run. But they're, they're trying it. They're moving ahead because they think that it's a reasonable way of proceeding. The reason their treatments are two feet wide is because their sidewalks are based on six foot sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And they have to be ADA compliant, so that's what that's what they get. Yeah. And, and uh, I have a photograph on my phone of like a gigantic, uh, probably lemon playing or sycamore tree, and you can just see that 
It didn't. They took the whole space, the whole sidewalk, clearly, and they just went around and do a people's lawn and back and everything. So they're doing, you know, yeah. they're doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So I just think that we should keep in mind that there are other people doing other things. There are biochar experts at UMass. Exactly. Where, you know, we could. Yeah. There's a guy that makes it. In, in yeah. The, 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 the sales somewhere. Sorry. It's local. The right. salesperson uh, is Bear Levanji. Melissa Levanji's sister. She's a the tree born in Peter Sham. So oh, yeah. If you were interested, she might be willing to give us a full cool presentation I'd, on her. I'd, 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 I'd be really interested. If you were yeah. to reach out to her, I would be more than happy to. She's yeah. reached out to me several times, and I, we haven't really been able to connect. But it is an interesting concept because if we were, if it proves to be successful, then that would actually be a huge reduction in cost for actually ripping up the hardscape and excavating it all and places where, you know, like Florence Center, for example, where there is no plan to renovate Florence Center anytime soon. What you're talking is a tree pit no bigger than my, my laptop. Mm -hmm. But we could actually, there we could actually saw cut. We could do things a little differently there. There's plenty of sidewalk to work with. Mm -hmm. And not actually try, try to do something in-house that doesn't incur a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. and that's my thing with doing the CU soil is that it's, it's just, there's a lot of, it's very labor intensive and a lot of construction work has to go into it to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You're almost better off starting from from the beginning mm -hmm. when you're actually doing sidewalk curving. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you know. But the retrofits are very yeah, expensive. Yeah. The retrofits are not. From yeah. the get go, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are you saying if you factor that against how many trees you can plant? Right. Or yeah, I mean, weigh that against. You're, you're using a lot of. You're using if you're if you're going to tap the same kind of resource. If you're going to tap the same resources that we have to do all these other things and plant a hundred tree versus hundred trees traditionally versus planting five trees, you know, you're it's not the the hard to swallow. Right, the cost benefit is not there. I don't think. Yeah. Possibly. So Cambridge is struggling with this. That's the direction they're going in. Okay. The big way. And so I think I think. It's a little bit of, it's, you don't just buy the biochar and throw it in, you gotta do the step in between and talk about it from the local person. Oh, Any other there. business? Yeah. Well, the only other thing I want to bring up is related to the chicken list. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lily inquired recently if I was keeping up with the Google Doc um, of the to-do list, and I haven't been because I, I it seemed like we had a new system where people were reporting out and it was recorded on our minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing to go back to the program feels like it's a good idea, one, to have a public record, two, to have a reference which posts all of our to -dos. Um I'm willing to keep doing it, but also just want to uh, make sure that people are, are using it and feel like it's useful. I mean, having it on the minutes is, you know, yeah, I like it on the mm -hmm. minutes. The, the thing is, though, we get the minutes at the next meeting. Yeah, right. But between now and the next meeting, do you know what you've committed to? And also, if you've forgotten to do something, you won't see it on the following right. Right. Yeah. It will be lost in the ether. Yeah, right. the online so, version is, no, yeah, week to week. Well, and somebody else could, let's say, somebody, whatever. Or was incapacity and couldn't come to the next five meetings yeah. and something needed to be picked up, there would be a record. Yeah, Somebody like else could go in and say, wait, yeah. these were the things they were doing, so let's yeah. take over. It also allows us to take stock of everything we've done. That's yeah. a good point. I agree with you. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good about everything we've done. All right. All right. Thank you. I think there's value there. Okay. okay. So to that point, yes. to-do list, I'll start with myself. Um, I'm going to connect Maxie to Karen and Rich for, the, for creating a map. I'm going to send you, Rich, some language on um, uh, for updating the neighborhood tree planting application. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Subcommittee meeting. Subcommittee meeting. We're going to do that right after. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, subcommittee meeting. That's Molly's. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm focused on pruning and specifically getting together a group of people who will be capable of pruning independently. That's ongoing and it's beginning to 
seemed to look a little brighter than it was in the early fall, in the early winter. Uh, I will hold off on uh, emailing Julie back until uh, Rich and um, Rob take a look at the uh, Y space so we can be a little more specific. And um, I will email Lee tomorrow in CC or CCU so you can formally invite him to Okay, the, terrific. Um, I can do that tomorrow. What's his uh, what, what's his title? Yeah. I think he's the I think he's the city of Chicopee plan, planner. Yeah. I, I have to yeah. I have to look on the website. But, okay. Um, yeah. And, and then, then I'm hoping to get um, to prune her days. Yeah. So, up on Saturday, on Saturday something. Jen, um, this isn't immediate, but I also have a note that you mentioned that um, on Arbor Day you might be able to get some demo trees for oh. mulching. Yes. yes. Oh, sure. Good and bad. Sure. Yeah. And if you can, we could always use our own. So we will have trees at that point. Whatever's easier. I just, just he's, like, he's just offered. Just me yeah, he's offered to me whatever you need. You, can, you know, I can go get them, use them, and then take them back. Okay. Okay. My daughter's applying to work at Chapman. Oh, really? Awesome. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, 26, 26 and 27. So, let's see, I've got an email Maria Walton from the Housing Authority to follow up on the setback plan for the Gale Apartments. Got to reach back out to Councilman Barge to talk to her about her listserv. If she's willing to share it with us, if she even has one, which I don't think she would. Um, I'm also going to uh, email. Marie Westerberg, the director of the Senior Center, to, to, to talk about the tree plantings in the parking lot. Next couple of days, I'm going to meet with Rob so we can actually just kind of take all this individually to try to set a, a certain number of trees that we can think we can successfully plant in two days. Uh, I'm going to work with Rob and Alicia on the setback planting brochure to try to finalize that so we can get from the commission. Um, Marcus Renting, I'm going to connect with them to get the Volcano Mulch Lawn Signs. I'm going to talk to Karen about getting uh, feasibility for a walking map that we can hand out for, for Arbor Day for the Trees Week walking tour. And I'm going to reach out to Bear, um, Bear or Banji uh, about biochar and see if we can get her on some come in for a commission meeting to give us a little presentation if you're all interested. I think I've captured all of that. Marilyn, if you would put that online for me, I'd really, really appreciate it. Yeah. I'll never do that for That's a lot. Well, it is a lot. They're all, they're all small things, which I can accomplish pretty easily, but that is just all the follow up. So. I think I got it, Rich. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm going to contact the school department and ask them if there's, a, if as commissioners, we could uh, promote the tree poster contest to fifth grade directly to fifth grade art teachers. And if you try to contact them um, and share that information with Marilyn, I'm going to start recruiting people, which I actually did at this meeting for the, um, I was part of Northampton, Tree Northampton, getting um, Arbor Day up and running with volunteers. And I think that's all I see. That's that. That's all I did. That's that. All right, for Arbor Day, I'm going to. Um, revise our letter to landscapers last year, and um, oh, I, I received the spreadsheet from you, which yep. all of that should be. Yep. Uh, let's see. I'm going to send the school list to Jen because you see you might be able to drop those off. And yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to okay. just physically take yep. things, walk in the door. All right. Okay. It might be a little more effective than getting the help of three people moving yep. around. Yeah. And then, uh, Rich, I'll follow up with you about next steps on a commemorative tree planting. Okay, great. Thank and you. And capture what we discussed and keep it on the list. Motion to adjourn this meeting. I motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.